So in this video, we're going to define and use the six basic trigonometric functions that are based on constructing a right triangle. So here's the big idea. The big idea is that um, for any right triangle, you're going to have two additional acute angles. And if we give one of those acute angles a name, let's say we call this one theta, we can talk about the side of the right triangle that is opposite that angle theta. We can talk about the side of the right triangle that is adjacent to the acute angle theta. And then there's going to be a hypotenuse for that right triangle. So there's three lengths. Given any acute angle theta in a right triangle, there's three lengths that we can talk about. Length of the side opposite that angle, the length of this line segment that is adjacent that angle and the length of the line segment that constitutes the hypotenuse of that right triangle. And we can take ratios of those sides. So for example, I can take the op length of the opposite side and I can divide it by the length of the adjacent side. So I did that here and you get a numeric value when you divide those two lengths. I can take the length of the side that is opposite my angle theta and divide it by the length of the hypotenuse which I did right here. And you get a numeric value if you do that or find that ratio. And I can take the length of the side adjacent or next to theta, the, an acute angle on the right triangle, and divide it by the length of the hypotenuse. And I get a numeric value. And if I change theta, if I change the size of theta and I look at these side ratios, I see as theta changes, those side ratios change. However, if I keep theta constant, so here theta is 48.53 degrees, so if I create any similar right triangle that has an angle of 48.53 degrees, any similar triangle, one that's smaller, one that's larger than what I started with, if I dilate that triangle to any size, if I pay attention to these side ratios, I see that they remain constant under dilation by any uh, positive scalar k. So this is the big idea in trigonometry. It's that given a right triangle and its two acute angles that these side ratios are constant for any given similar triangle. And in mathematics anytime you can find a value that remains constant then you can use that to find unknown quantities. You can use it to solve problems. So in math, these are going to turn out to be important tools for solving problems. So these side ratios that are important, they get names. So opposite divided by adjacent. So I find, I find an acute angle in a right triangle. There's going to be a side that's opposite that angle, and there's going to be a side that is next to or adjacent or attached to that angle. So if we take that ratio, we give it a name, we call it the tangent. And we shorten that to tan. And this is a function, so we give it function notation. We say tangent of the angle theta is the side ratio you get when you take the side opposite the angle and you divide it by the side that is adjacent to the angle. And the reciprocal of the tangent, so 1 over the tangent or adjacent over opposite is given a name. The reciprocal of this ratio is called the cotangent, which we shorten to cot. And the cotangent of an angle is just the reciprocal the cotangent of an angle is just the reciprocal of the tangent. So it's going to be the side adjacent over the side opposite. So we take the rate, the reciprocal this, uh, of this guy here. So this also means if tangent and cotangent are reciprocal ratios, then that means that the tangent of theta is the same as 1 over the cotangent of theta. And similarly, the cotangent of theta is just given by 1 over the tangent of theta. So the next side ratio is opposite divided by hypotenuse. So opposite divided by the right triangle hypotenuse. So opposite divided by hypotenuse. It gets a name. We call it the sine. And we usually shorten it to sin 
the sine of theta is just the ratio of the side opposite to the triang right triangle's hypotenuse. And its reciprocal is the co cosecant, which we usually shorten to CSC, and then the cosecant of an angle, again I'm using function notation, is just the hypotenuse over the opposite. It's the reciprocal of the sine function. So it's hypotenuse divided by opposite. And so it's going to have a reciprocal relationship with sine. Sine of theta is the same as 1 over the cosecant of theta. And the cosecant of theta is the same as 1 over the sine of theta. And then the last relationship, side ratio, to define is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So if we take the side adjacent or next to the angle theta, and we divide it by the hypotenuse of the right triangle, we give that a name as well. We call it the cosine. And the cosine is usually shortened to COS, cos theta equals the length of the sided next to theta or adjacent, ADJ, adjacent theta divided by hypotenuse. Its reciprocal is called the secant, which is usually shortened to SEC. And the secant of theta is just the reciprocal of the cosine, so it's hypotenuse over adjacent, hypotenuse over adjacent, and the relationships are the same as they were for the previous. The cosine of theta is the reciprocal of the secant, so it's 1 over the secant, and the secant is the reciprocal of the sine function, so it's equal to 1, sorry, it's reciprocal of the cosine function, so it's 1 over the cosine. So we give these side ratios names because they are constant and anytime something is constant in math it can be used to solve problems. So we can start with the right triangle for example. So here I have a, an angle theta. I have sides adjacent theta and I have a side of length 6 that is opposite theta. And so I could go in here and say hey I'm going to calculate the cosine of that angle and we just define the cosine of an angle to be the side adjacent the angle divided by the hypotenuse of the right triangle so here's theta here's the side that is adjacent or next to theta and its length is 5 so we just do the side ratio 5 divided by the hypotenuse but we aren't told the hypotenuse but because it's a right triangle a 90 degree triangle we can use the Pythagorean theorem. We know that the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the legs of the right triangle, which is just going to be the square root of 25 plus 36, which is just equal to the square root of, what's that, 61. So this length is the square root of 61. And typically, when you're working in trig, unless you're told to approximate, you don't do it. So this is going to be 5 over the square root of 61. And for, in my opinion, this is good. There's no problem with having the radical in the denominator position. Sometimes if you're working, for example, in an online homework platform, they may make you rationalize this before you submit. So you might have to rationalize the denominator by multiplying by square root of 61 over square root of 61. This is 1, so it doesn't change the value. So we get 5 root 61. The square root times the square root is the square root squared. The squaring cancels the square root. So we could write it like this. This is also good. The side opposite, the sine of theta, sorry, the sine of the angle is the side opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So that's just the side opposite over the hypotenuse. Again, we could rationalize it, but I don't think that's necessary. So I'm going to say that this is good. And the tangent of the angle is just defined to be the length of the side opposite, which is 6 divided by the length of the side next to or adjacent the angle, so 6 fifths is the tangent of theta. So we could, so in, in the previous slide, 
what happened was we didn't know the angle. We don't know the angle. The angle's a mystery, question mark. We're gonna discover as we go that we can actually determine this angle if we know the side ratio. But we knew we didn't know the angle, but we did know the lengths, so we were able to identify the side ratio. Here we may not have the triangle. We may not know the side lengths, but I might know that I have a right triangle that has a 27 degree acute angle. And even though I don't know the length of these sides, this is the side opposite, this is the side adjacent. I don't, I don't know what they are, but I can still determine the side ratio that I would get because the side ratio is the same for every 27 degree angle that exists. Our calculators can be programmed to identify those side angle, angle lengths. It used to be the case you would look it up in a book. We don't do that anymore. We let our calculators do it. But I see that I have a degree measure. So it's, it's the sine of 27 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator to calculate that. I'm going to keep the changes. I'm going to pull my calculator up. That's not my calculator. Here's my calculator. And I'm going to see that I have a button on my calculator for sine, for cosine, and for tangent. So to get the sine of 27 degrees, I'm going to go sine. And then I can put in my 27. But before I do anything, I need to make sure that the calculator is measuring in degrees because we measure angles both in degrees and in radians. So I go into mode right here. I click mode. And I look down and I, my, in my menu and I see that I have the choice between radians and degrees. So right now my calculator is in radians. So to get 27 degrees, I need to change over to degree mode and then exit back out to my main screen. And now I can hit enter and I'll get the sine of 27. So if we approximate that to four decimal places, it's going to be 0.45. Four zero. So the sine of that angle, the sine of that angle is going to be approximately, it's not exact, I'm going to have to approximate this. And I kept it, so now it's a GIF or JPEG or something. Actually, it's a JPEG, I think. Ooh, come on, don't be like that. Okay, so this is 0 0.04540 to four decimal places with the approximately symbol. Tangent of 40 degrees, it would be the same song and dance. So tangent of 40 degrees, I would just pop my calculator open. I would go down to the tangent button right here. I just put the calculator into degree mode, so I know I don't need to check. I do the tangent, which is going to be 0 0.8391, 0 0.8391. So I say, hey, you are approximately equal to 0 0.8391. The cotangent, if I look at my calculator, I notice that the cotangent doesn't have its own button. There's only a button for sine, cosine, and tangent. So what I need to remember for the cotangent is that the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent function, so it's the same as 1 over the tangent of 40 degrees. So, and I'm going to approximate this, so I'll put the approximately equals to symbol there. I'm going to keep that, grab the calculator. So to get this calculation, I would do 1 divided by, 1 divided by the tangent of 40 degrees. And then I would hit enter and get that approximation, 1.1918, 1 1.1918. 1 so approximately equal to 1.1918. And then over here, we'll, get, we'll do one more. This is cosine of 0.75. So notice there's no degree symbol on it. So if you don't see a degree symbol, it means that this measure is in radians. If I accidentally, say I'm working on homework or something, and I accidentally do the sine of 27 and I don't put the degree measure on, I'm wrong if I want the measurement in degrees because if I don't put a degree symbol, the default is that I'm working in radians. So this is the cosine 
of 0 0.75 radians. I want to approximate that. So using my calculator, I'd pull my calculator back up and I would need to go into mode and I would need to change from degree back into radian mode. And then once I do that, I can exit that screen and then I could calculate the cosine using the cosine button of 0.75 and hit enter and we get 0.7317 so 0.7317 grab the wrong pin 0.7317 so another way this information can be fed to us is on a right triangle so here I see the symbol for right triangle if I do not see the symbol and if it just looks like the triangle is a right triangle I can't make that assumption. So if in a homework assignment you're given a name uh, triangle and, they, and it's not indicated to you that this is a right triangle, either explicitly or implicitly, you usually don't want to assume that it is. So we look here and this is just to fill in the blanks. We're given this one side length and two angle measures. So to get the length of angle B is the simplest because the sum of the three angles, this is angle B right here, this is our angle B. The sum of the angles has to add up to 180, so we know that the angle B plus 32, deg 32 degrees plus 90 degrees has to add up to 180, which means that B plus 32 degrees has to add up to 90 degrees, which means B needs to equal 90 degrees minus 32, which is going to be 58 degrees. And that's exact. And then we want to approximate the lengths of B and C. So let's say we're working on B and I want to know the length of B. Well, this is the side adjacent an angle I know, so I know the 32 degree angle. So let's work from that. I could use the 58 degree angle, it wouldn't matter. Um, they got the 32 degree angle right here, and I know the side adjacent it. So there's two definitions I know. I know that the cosine of 32 degrees is going to equal the side adjacent over the hypotenuse. This was by how we had identified cosine. And I know that the tangent of an angle is equal to the side opposite divided by the side adjacent. This is how we define the tangent function. So the idea here is that I can't use the cosine definition I should have put 32 degrees in here. I can't use the cosine definition because I don't know the hypotenuse, right? I don't know, it's gonna equal side adjacent over hypotenuse, but I know neither one of these two measures. I need to know one of the two measures. So I'm going to wind up needing to use opposite over adjacent. So I see that the tangent of 32 degrees is just equal to what is it equal to? Side opposite, which is 24, over adjacent, which is B. Now I can solve for B. I multiply both sides by B. I get B times the tangent of 32 degrees is equal to 24, and then divide both sides by the tangent of 32 degrees to get B by itself. So this equals 1. So we get B is the side ratio 24 divided by the tangent of 32 degrees. This is the exact length of this side. It is 24 over tangent of 32 degrees. And we can approximate it using the calculator by popping our graphing calculator open and doing that ratio 24 divided by the tangent of 32. So we could go 24 divided by the tangent of our angle measure was 32, 32, but that angle measure is in degrees and we just switched back into radian mode a moment ago. So I need to go back into mode. I need to change radians here back over into degrees. 
and this is probably the thing that makes people stumble more than anything is not making sure they're in the correct mode. So we're doing 24 divided by the tangent of 32. So that's about 38.4 units. So we have this side length is about 38.4 units. And then we need to find the length of the hypotenuse. So there's two ways I could get this. I could use the Pythagorean theorem using these two numbers because now I know the, si the side lengths for the right triangle, but I probably don't want to do that because this is a rounded number. It's going to be better to use a number that hasn't been rounded. So what I'm going to do probably to find the length of C is use either the cosine or the sine function. So for example, we know that the sine of an angle, like 32 degrees, we defined it to be the side opposite. The sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And in this case, then, we would get that the sine of 32 degrees was equal to the side opposite, which is 24 divided by the hypotenuse, which is C, and then we just solve for C using algebra. Multiply both sides by C. C times the sine of 32 degrees equals 24. Divide both sides by the sine of 32, so we get C equals 24 over the sine of 32 degrees, and that's the exact length. The exact length is 24 over sine 32. And we could approximate that in our graphing calculator. Calculator, We could say, hey, let's do 24 divided by the sine of 40, sorry, 32, sine of 32. And we're already in degree mode, so we just hit enter and we get 45.3 for our final approximation. So C is about 45. Point three, and these would be in millimeters because we've been given units on our length measures.